you're welcome once more to this youtube channel today we are going to look at solution to physics 2023 jam examination in preparation for the forthcoming 2024 physics jam examination as you all know jam examination is meant for students who are about to enter tertiary institutions or high or university college educations or polytechnics so that examination meant for them or entrance examination to university or high institutions and for you to score high in jam you have to make a good aggregate and that in tell that you have to prepare so much and then looking at past questions and look at solutions we know that in both jam examination questions are repeated and then you have our paraphrase so after studying you have to go through past questions and get the best of the solutions because most of the solutions we have in compiled questions are either not well explained or are wrong because the solutions are not from the exam body right the questions are from the exam body so you have to understand the intricacies in solving jam problems and the simple ways of doing that so having done that if you are not subscribed to the channel or you are seeing the channel for the very first time kindly move to the channel's name i'll go to best science brand see the channel's name under it you're going to see the subscription button button or a bell a tiny bell tap on it once and get subscribed to the channel so move to the jam physics 2023 question number one says in a hydraulic press the pump piston exerts a pressure of 100 pascal on the liquid what force is exerted on the scum piston of questional area 3 meters squared option a 200 newton option b 100 newton option c 150 newton option d 300 newton Solution the right answer is option D 300 Newton is correct. Let's explain why it is so the hydraulic press was on the principle on what called the Pascal's principle of transmission of pressure Which specify that pressure is transmitted undiminished in an enclosed vessel or container So pressure in the hydraulic press the, the principle there is a pressure on the pump piston which is called P1 is equal to pressure on the load piston called P2 or F1 over A1, called pressure in force over area, equal to F2 over A2. In the equation, we are giving the pressure P1 on the pump piston to be equal to 100 Pascal, and then we are giving A2 at 3 meters squared, and we are looking for F2, so the force on the load piston. So we now say, replace F1 over A1 by P1, that gives us equal to F2 over A2, making F2 the subject, F2 becomes P1 times A1, then substitute the values, P1 is 100 and then the area is 3 meters and we have 300 Newton Quad error demonstration. The answer is option D. Number 2 say the accurate measurement of the relative density. The accurate measurement of the relative density bottle. I'll come again, sorry. The accurate measurement of the relative density of a substance in its power that form is done with a beam balance and so you want to measure A, Eureka can, B, a blue red, C, a pipette, and D, a density bottle. So what we use to find the relative density of a substance in powder form? The correct answer is the density bottle, option D. Very good solution, option D is correct. Number three says, a hydrometer is an instrument for measuring. Hydrometer is an instrument for measuring A, density of bottle, of liquid, B, relative density of liquid, C, Relative humidity of liquid and D, vapor pressure of a liquid. The correct answer is B, relative density of liquid, hydrometer. So look at the solution. Hydrometer measures the relative density of a liquid by method of flotation. By method of flotation. The other instrument that's more like it, the name sounds similar, called hygrometer. Look at the spelling. Hygrometer measures relative humidity. So take care of that. Going to number four, the following is the scalar quantity A, electric potential, B, electric field, C, angular momentum, D, linear momentum. The answer to this question is electric potential, option A. So they will go down, option A is the correct answer. Scalars are have magnitude only and they include mass, length, distance, or radius, diameter, or height. So that Length can include distance, radius, diameter, height, any form of length, time, current, temperature, amount. That means fundamental quantities are scalar quantities. Also, some derived quantities like area, volume, density, power, 
energy, work, electric potential, and gravitational potential are also scalar quantities. They have only magnitude but no direction. Number five, if two plane mirrors are positioned side by side, the number of images formed is eight. At what angle are they positioned? A, 30, B, 40, C, 60, and D, 90. The answer to the equation is 40. Option B is the correct answer. Let's look at the solution. We'll apply that formula for to incline plane mirror. N, number of images, equal to 3C over theta minus 1. So having done that, our N is 8. We substitute N, carrying over 1 to that side. Carry one over one to the left hand side becomes m plus one. We now have eight plus one equal to three six over theta. Eight plus one is nine. So we have that under theta, making that the subject. We now have three six two over nine, you know, 40 degrees B QED. Number six. One special advantage of alcohol over mercury as a thermometric liquid is is a low freezing point, B low boiling point, C high. Speak here, speak here capacity and the low density. Solution answer is A, low freezing point is correct. Alcohol has very low freezing point and is used in construction of thermometers designed to measure low temperatures. So that's why A is correct. So going to number seven, the mode of heat transfer that is electromagnetic in nature is A, conduction B, Evaporation C, conversion and D, radiation. Option D is correct, which is radiation. Number eight. A solid weighs 10.5 newton and 5.5 newton. When immersed in a liquid, the solid weighs 10.5 newton and 5.5 newton. When immersed in a liquid of density 900, 900 kilogram per meter, calculate the volume per meter cube. The volume of the solid G is 10 meter squared. Option A 1.173 minus 7 meter cube. Option B 5.5 C 10 power minus 4 meter cube. Option C 3.24 10 power minus 4 meter cube. Option D 2.24 10 power minus 4 meter cube. The correct option is B. Correct, which is 5.5 C 10 power minus 4 meter cube. So let's see how to solve the problem. The weight of the solid in air, which is W1, is 10.5 Newton. The weight of the solid in liquid, W2, is 5.5 Newton. Up thrust is weight in air minus weight in liquid, which is 10.5 minus 5.5, which is 5 Newton. Then up thrust also can be obtained by using volume of solid times density of liquid times ascension due to gravity. From the solid is what we're looking for. Density of liquid is 900 kilograms per meter cube. Ascension to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. We will now make, from that formula, we will now make Vs the subject. So, make Vs, so we will now have U all over density of liquid time G. Substitute, up thrust is 5, all over density of liquid 900 times 10. What we'll solve, we we'll divide 5 by 9,000, we'll have 5.56 per minus 4 per meter cube. Option B is correct. We will now go to number 9. Says an object is placed 15 cm in front of a concave mirror of radius 40 cm. The image form is A, virtual and 40 cm from the mirror, B, real and 60 cm from in front of the mirror, C, virtual and 60 cm behind the mirror, and D, real and, in, and at infinity. The correct answer is option C. So let's see how it goes. The object is placed 15 cm from the mirror. That becomes U, and that U means the object distance, 15 cm. Radius of curvature of the mirror is 40 cm. We get the focal length. Focal length is radius of curvature over 2. Divide the radius by 2. 40 by 2 gives us 20 cm. We get the focal length positive because they really focus. Concave mirror have positive focal length. While convex mirror have negative focal length. We're looking for V, that the image distance. We apply the mirror formula. 1 over V equals 1 over F minus 1 over U. So having done that, we'll substitute. 1 over 20 minus 1 over 15. We we'll take LCM of 20 and 15. The LCM of the two of them is 60. We we'll combine and solve. We we'll now have minus 1 over 60 as our 1 over V. So to find V, we we'll invert both sides. V over 1 give us V. Minus 60 over minus 1 give us minus 60. Inverting both sides. 
inverting v, one over v, giving you v, inverting uh, minus one over 60, giving us minus 60. So the image distance is negative distance. And in mirror, when we have negative distance, it means that the image is virtual and formed behind the mirror. So image is virtual, formed at a distance, this is behind the mirror. And also, we can say the image is erect because all virtual images are erect and upright. Image is also magnified because the value of V60 is bigger than the value of U, which is 20. Number 10, the efficiency of machine is 70%. Calculate the work done using this machine to raise the load of 10 kg through a vertical height of 2.0 meter, taking the assumption due to gravity G to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. A is 2,000 joules, B 3,000 joules, C 15,000 joules, and D 1,000 joules. This solution, in this question, no answer is correct. So you don't click this answer on this. So why is why don't we have an answer? They look at it. Efficiency is 70%. Then we want to find the load. They give us the mass as 10 kg. So convert the mass to force. The load is sent as weight equal to mg which is going to be 10 times 10, giving us 100 Newton. The load distance is 2 meters, because the load was raised to a vertical distance of 2 meters, that becomes the load distance, 2 meters. Work output is load times load distance, which is 100 times 2, which is 200 joules. Work input is what we're looking for. Efficiency is work output over work input times 100 over 1. We now substitute the work output. Efficiency is 70%, that's 70 over 1. Work output 200. Work input, we we'll call it Y times 100 over 1. We now solve 70 over 1, multiply the numerator on the right hand side, 200 times 100 gives us 20,000 over y. We can apply 70y gives us 20,000. Then y becomes 20,000 over 70. That gives us 285.71 joules. Cure ED. There's no correct option. We want to verify your answer. Take the work input 285.71. Go back to the formula. The work output is is a uh, 200. Go to the formula here. The right hand side replace y with 285. What we'll got 285.71. Divide 200 by 285.71. Multiply by 100. You get 70 percent to show that we are right. So go to equation number 11. 11. In infometer rule A B, balance on a knife edge 60 cm from the end B. When a load of 22 gram is kept at kept 10 cm from N A, what is the weight of the meter rule? Option A 40 grams, B 56 gram, C 66 gram, and D 37 grams. The answer to the equation is C 66 grams. So to scale this problem, we'll draw a horizontal line A B. That A B represents the meter rule. After drawing the horizontal line, locate the center of gravity. The meter rule is uniform, so the center of gravity is half, middle of it, at 50 cm. So you can see the 50 cm there. And at that point, you draw an arrow showing that the mass out on the center of gravity. After you have done that, then locate the balance point. The balance point is the place you place the pivot, that shade that looks like a triangle. We say that it's balanced at a point 60 cm from NB. From NB, mind you, NB is the 100 cm. So 60 cm from MB means subtract 100 from 60 from 100, that becomes 40. So balance point is at 40. That's why you play the triangle. Then have a mass given to a mass of 22 gram hanging on the 10 cm mark from A. So the mass of 22 gram hangs on the 10 cm mark, as you can see it illustrated there. Then find the distance between each mass and the pivot. So 22 grams from the pivot, we have 40 minus 10, that gives us 30. And then 50, that the Central gravity for the people 50 minus 40 that gives us 10. We we'll take moment clockwise moment. What the anti clockwise moment 22 grams times 30 equal to m times 10. You make m the subject, m now gives you 22 times 30 over 10, and that will give you 66 gram QED. Number 22 says, Which of the following is true of a particle in stable equilibrium? A potential energy is constant. B Potential energy is maximum, C. Potential energy is minimum, D. Potential energy is zero. The answer is option C is correct. Potential energy is minimum. A body in a state of stable equilibrium would have a broad and low base with minimum potential energy. Number 13. One of these is not an example of mechanical wave. A. Sound wave, B. Water wave, C. Light wave, and D. 
seismic wave. The answer to the question is light wave. Light is the option C. Light is the electromagnetic. So you see the solution there. Option C is correct. Light is the magnetic because it needs no material medium for its propagation. Number 14. The defect of the eye which occurs when the ciliary muscles are weak is called A. Long sightedness. B. Short sightedness. C. Presbyopia. And D. Astigmatism. The answer to the equation is presbyopia. Option C is correct. Presbyopia is an eye defect which is caused by weakness of ciliary muscles as a result of old age, causing the eye to lose its power of accommodation. Number 15. What is the minimum, maximum possible wavelength of an open organ pipe of length alpha cm? A. Alpha cm. B. 2 alpha cm. C. 3 alpha cm. D. 4 alpha cm. Solution. Option B is correct. Maximum wavelength occurs in a vibrating body at its fundamental mode of vibration. So the one that the first harmonies. For open pipe at the fundamental mode of vibration, wavelength is equal to 2L. So replace that L. Since the length is alpha, replace that L with alpha. You now have 2 alpha. So option B is the correct answer, 2 alpha. Number 16. Mercury is used at a thermometric substance because 1. Is speed capacity is low. B does not weigh glass. Three, it is opaque. Option A one I only. B one and two only. C two and three only. And D one two and three. Option D is correct. So mercury is a good thermometric substance because it has a low speed capacity. Because look, uh, that means it's a good conductor because good conductors have low capacity capacity he has it doesn't will not weigh glass and it is opaque you can easily see it in glass so all of them are correct uh, 17 in a simple machine the variation of efficiency with load is a a parabola b a straight line c a hyperbola and d a log is d logarithmic the answer to the equation is b a straight line why Efficiency of the machine is directly proportional to load. Look at that formula. Efficiency is load all over E effort times VR. Remember, load over effort is central mechanical advantage. We have substituted the MA with load over effort times 100 over 1. So you see that efficiency varies directly as length. That means as efficiency increases, varies directly as load. As efficiency increases, the load will increase. And that will give us a straight line graph. Number 18. If the half-life of a particle is 4.5 days, how long will it take to the quarter of the, of the original mass? How long will it take to decay to the quarter of the original mass? Option A, 9 days, B, 12 days, C, 15 days, and D, 21 days. Solution option A is correct, 9 days. Let's look at how we solved it. We'll draw a table, count rate, fraction, fraction remaining and fraction decayed. The count rate is the half-life. So the first count rate is the half life. In 4.5 days, half of the substance remains. What fraction of decay? We now say 1 minus half, which is giving us one half also. Then we add another 4.5 to the half life. Since the half life, the count rate is four, in every 4.5 days. So 4.5 plus 4 gives us 9 days. Fraction that has is that remaining is now half times half, which gives us 1 over 4. The fraction that has decayed is 1 minus 1 over 4, which gives us 3 over 4. The quarter has, de has decayed in nine days. So that's why the correct answer is option A. So we'll now look at number 19. Binding energy A, the amount of energy release, the amount of energy release when proton change in level B, the amount of energy release when electron change in level C, the amount of energy release to break a nucleus apart into protons and neutrons. D, the amount of energy required to break a nucleus apart into protons and electrons. Option C is correct. So that is of binding energy. The amount of energy released, or sorry, required to break a nucleus apart into protons and neutrons. Number 20. If the heat capacity of 100 grams of a substance is 300 joule per Kelvin, what will be the heat capacity of 10 grams of the substance? Option A, 30 joule per Kelvin. B, 300 joule per Kelvin. C, 30,000 joule per Kelvin and D, 3 joule per Kelvin. 
option C, B is correct. Turn on the job per Kevin. So how to get the answer? Heat or thermal capacity, which is CP, given by mass, M times specific heat capacity, C. So CP is MC. So we now have CP1, because the CP1 is the first heat capacity given, give to, given to us in question. That is 3,000 J per Kevin, which corresponds to 100 gram. So CP1 is 3,000, not 300, 3,000. Let's correct the error. They corrected. 3,000 J per Kelvin. And the man that corresponds to it, M1, it's 100 grams. So going by the formula, um, from that formula, we'll say CP is MC. We may see the subject. That C represents the specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity. So C becomes CP over M. We we'll divide 3,000 by 100. And that gives us 30 J per gram per Kelvin. So that is the, the value of the speed capacity. So having done that, similar substances, since the substances are, are the same, the two conditions, we are dealing with the same substances. Similar substances have the same value for, the, for their speed capacity. So we now have CP2, that is the second thermal capacity, which is M2 times C. So this called mass is 10. Because they, the substance are the same, they have the same value of C. We play that C with the same that we got above. Multiply 10 by that, we have 100 J per Kelvin. That's the answer. 21. Which of these thermometers uses the volume of a fixed mass of liquid as its thermometric property? A. Mercury in glass thermometer. B. Thermocouple thermometer. C. Constant volume of glass thermometer. And D. Resistant thermometer. Option A is correct. A living in glass thermometer works on the principle of variation of volume of a fixed mass of gas, fixed mass of liquid, sorry, with temperature. So the answer is option A. Number 22. As pressure is increased, the met A, the melting point of the ice decreases. B, the melting point of the ice increases. C, the boiling point of water increases. D, no change is observed in the melting point of ice or the boiling point of water. The answer to this question is option A. The melting point of ice decreases. Number 23. A cyclist of mass 30 kg exerts a force of 250 newton to move his bicycle. The acceleration produces 4 meters per second squared. What is the frictional force between the road and the tires? Option A. 200 newton. Option B. 120 newton. Option C, 130 newton. Option D, 180 newton. The answer is C, 130 newton. So, what do we do? Find the force using mass times acceleration, 250 times 4. That is, sorry, mass is 30, 30 a kg times 4. Acceleration, that gives us is FMA. That is, that times 4 gives us 120 newton. We then subtract the two forces. 250 minus 120 gives us 130, which is the frictional force. Number 24. A gas with initial volume 2 times power minus 6 meter cube is allowed to expand to 6 times its initial volume at constant pressure of 2 times power 5 newton per meter squared. The work done is A, 2.0 joules, B, 4.0 joules, C, 12.0 joules, and D, 1.2 joules. The answer to the question is option A, 2.0 joules. So how do we come about that answer? We'll go to the solution explanation. Work done in expansion or compression of the gas is given by the formula W work equal to pressure multiplied by change in volume. So the pressure of the gas or that used in compressing the gas is 2 times power 5 newton per meter squared. The first volume is 2 times power minus 6 that meter cube, that V1. The V2 is 6V1. So 6V1 is 6 times, since they say it was the gas, the gas uh, expands 6 times its initial volume. So V2 is 6V1. So multiply 2 times power minus 6 by 6. You have 12 times power minus 6. So work done, substitute pressure with 2 times power minus 2 times power 5, then multiply by the change in volume, which is 12 times power minus 6 minus. 2 times power minus 6. That's the uh, solution there. And we're going to get 2 joules as our answer option A. 25. The thermometric substance of the absolute, zero, absolute temperature is A. Alcohol, B. Mercury, C. Helium, and D. Platinum. 
the answer is make the option B is the right answer, 25. So option B is correct. 26. A working electric motor has a current of 1.5 amperes when the potential difference across is 250 volts. The deficiency is 80%. The power output is A, 300 watts, B, 469 watts, C, 133 watts, and D, 4.8 watts. The correct answer is A, 300 watts. We're looking for the, the power output of the machine. So they have to solve it. Our current is 1.5 amperes, voltage is 250 volts. Power input is IEV, current times voltage, which is 1.5 times 250, giving us 375 watts. Power output, we call it Y. So if you substitute power output, which is uh, 375, all over the power input Y, that's 100, making the efficiency, efficiency of the machine is, um, is uh, 80. They substitute efficiency with 80 over 1, power output with 375, and then power input unknown Y times 100 solve. You get your answer Y is 200 watts. 27. The phenomenon whereby the water droplets in the atmosphere combined with dust particles in the air to re reduce visibility is A. Fog, B. Hell, C. Mist, and D. Cloud. The answer is A. Fog. Correct answer. 28. Addition of a trivalent impurity to semiconductor. A. Increase the number of holes. B. Decrease the number of holes. C. Increase the number of free electrons and D, decrease the number of free electrons. 28, option A is correct. Addition of a trivalent dopant, dopant means impurity, such as aluminum, we increase the number of holes in a semiconductor and produce a P-type semiconductor, while the addition of a trivalent dopant or impurity, such as phosphorus, we increase the number of electrons in the semiconductor and produce what's called an N-type semiconductor. Number 29, a charge of magnitude 1.6 times minus 9, 19 column is placed in a uniform electric field of intensity 1,200 volt per meter. Calculate its acceleration if the mass of the charge is 9.1 times minus 31 kilogram. A. 2.11 times power 12 meter per second squared. B. 2.11 times power 14 meter per second squared. C. 6.83 times power 12 meter per second squared. And D. 6.83 to the power minus 10 power 14 meter per second squared. The answer is B. 2.11 to the power minus 10 power 14 meter per second squared. How do we solve it? We will now go to solution Q. That is charge. It's 1.6 to the power minus 19 column. The mass of the particle is 9.1 to the power minus 31 kilogram. Then the E, that capital E means the electric field strength or intensity given to us in the equation which is 1,200 volt per meter. We're looking for acceleration. We know that force is, uh, electric f uh, is charge times electric field strength. So we apply 1.6 power minus 19 by 1,200, and that will give us um, 1.92 to the power minus 16 newton. And we know that acceleration is force over mass. So we divide, divide the force 1.92 to power minus 16, which we got above, by the, by the mass. The mass of the particle is 9.1 to the power minus 31. When we divide these two values, we have 2.11 to the power 14 meter per second square, which is our acceleration. So, mind you, this is rate power. So, let's correct it. Rate power 19. And this is rate power 16. Okay, let's go ahead. Number 30. The major difference between a pure semiconductor and a pure metal is that the resistance of a, a, the resistance of a, semi, of a metal increases while for a semiconductor it is reverse. Metals are harder than semiconductors. C. Metals have, forbid, have forbidden gas, so semiconductors have, have not. And D. Resistance, while resistance of metal decreases with temperature, the reverse is the case. For semiconductors, the answer is A. These are metals increase with temperature while the semiconductors decrease. 30 is A. A is correct. So look at the solution. The explanation for metals resistance and vary directly as temperature. So if you increase the temperature, resistance will also increase and vice versa. So for semiconductors, resistance varies inversely with temperature. If resistance increases, temperature is reduced and vice versa. 31. A particle is in a simple harmonic motion. While passing through 
mean position will have a minimum kinetic energy and maximum potential energy b maximum kinetic energy and minimum only c minimum kinetic energy and minimum potential energy and d maximum kinetic energy kinetic energy and minimum potential energy the answer to the question is d so a particle that is far, passing through its mean position like the equilibrium position or the lowest position well is will have maximum kinetic energy and minimum potential energy question d is correct 32 a pin flows on water due to the phenomenon of a viscosity in liquid b surface tension c capillarity capillary tension and d gravitation the answer is b a pin flows on water due to surface tension which made the water surface behave like elastic skin option b is correct 33 a thick glass tumbler cracks when hot water is poured into it because of a anomalous expansion of water b uneven expansion of glass tumbler c thermal expansion of water and d even a special glass tumbler. The answer is B. So option, option B is correct. The, the inner wall of the tumbler is in contact with the hot water and expands more than the outer wall, leading to a strain in the glass and causing cracking. Number 34. The instrument used for securing a large number of similar charges by induction is called a capacitor B. Electrophorus C, electroscope, and D, proof plan. The answer is B, electrophorus. Correct. We now look at that diagram for question number 35. We can see two resistors, 6 ohm and 3 ohm, connected in parallel. And we see the PD across them is 12 volts. We are told in the diagram the ratio of the electric power dissipated in the 6 ohm and the 3 ohm resistor, respectively, is option A, 2 is to 3. B, 1 is to 2, C, 1 is to 3, and D, 2 is to 1. The answer to the question is option B, 1 is to 2 is correct. So let's see how it goes. You see, the two resistors are connected in parallel, and hence we have the same voltage across them. So when resistors are connected in parallel, the PD across them remain the same. So let's take R1 and 6 ohm, which is R1 and 6 ohm, which is the first, the first resistor we're seeing there. Uh, 6 ohm, so the power across that 6 ohm, they call it P1, will become V squared over R, and our V is the PD across them, which is 12, 12 squared over 6. So P1 becomes 12 squared over 6, that becomes an expression for equation 1. Then for R2, take R2 at the second resistor, that is 3 ohm, P2 equal to V squared over R, then P2 becomes substitute a V squared with 12, we have 12 squared over R or over 3. That becomes equation 2. We will now divide equation 1 by equation 2. Divide equation 1 by equation 2. Look at equation 1 and look at equation 2 to get the ratio of P1 to P2. We will now have P1 over P2 on the left hand side equal to 12 squared over 6 for equation 1 divided by 12 squared over 3. And remember that when you are dividing fractions, you have to invert them. That why 3 over 12 squared is an inverted form instead of 12 squared over 3. So 12 squared cancelled 12 squared. We're left with 3 over 6. And 3 over 6 is nothing but half. So ratio of P1 to P2 is 1 is to 2. Number 36 says a machine of velocity ratio 6 requires an effort of 100 Newton to raise the load of 800 Newton through 1 meter. Find the efficiency of, of the machine A, 50% B. 22.2% C, 33.3% and D, 55.6%. Option C is correct. So, the answer, if, how do we solve it? C is 33.3%. Uh, Efficiency is load all over effort times velocity ratio times 100 over 1. Load over effort, of course, represents your mechanical advantage. Your load is 800, 800 Newton, effort is 400 Newton. If efficiency is unknown, EF, velocity ratio is 6, load distance is 1 meter. So you have substitution, F, uh, EF go to load, which is 800, all over E, which is 400, velocity ratio is 6, then times 100 over 1, you solve you have after 3.3%. You see that the load distance, 1 meter, is not required in the equation, it's not required for any solution. Number 37. If a wire 30 cm long is extended to 30.5 cm by a force of 300 newton, 
find the strength integer of the wire. Option A, 7.50 J. Option B, 750.00 J. Option C, 5.00 J. Option D, 0.75 J. Solution, the answer is solution is D. Option D is correct, 0.75 J. How do we get it? The original length, LO, of the wire is 30 cm. The new length after extension is 30.5 cm. Extension is nothing but new length my original length that is 30.5 minus 30 giving us 0.5 cm or in meters convert to meters 0.5 times power minus 2 or divide 0.5 by 100 since 100 cm make a meter giving you 0, 0.5 times power minus 2 meters. The force applied in the extension is 300 newton. The strength energy otherwise known as elastic potential energy given by half Fe or half Ke squared. But since we are not giving the elastic constant, we now use half Fe. So we now have half, the force is 300, then the E extension is 0 0.5, that's power minus 2 meters. Solving, we have 0 0.75 joules. From 38, a gas, a mass of gas at 20 degrees Celsius and 700 millimeter mercury has volume of 1.2 dn cubed. Determine its volume at 27 degrees Celsius and pressure and pressure of 750 millimeter mercury. A 2.2 meter cube. B 1.2 meter cube. C 4.8 meter cube and D 3.0 meter cube. Solution. Option B is correct. B is 1.2 meter cube. So let's see how it goes. Our first temperature is 17 in the equation. We'll convert to Kelvin by adding to 73. That is 290 Kelvin. Our second temperature is 27. We'll convert to Kelvin also by adding 273. That will give us also 300 Kelvin. Our first pressure is 700 millimeter mercury, P1. Our second pressure, P2, is 750 millimeter mercury. Then our V1 is 1.2 meter cube. Our V2 is uh, unknown. We're looking for V2. So we apply the general gas law. And then the general gas law, which you know, is V1, V1 over T1, P2, V2, over T2. You make V2 the subject, V2 will give you uh, P1, V1, multiply by T2, all over P2, T1. Then you substitute your values. Substitute all these values you have. You're going to get your final answer V2 as 1.16 meter cube, approximately 1.2 meter cube. Number 39, when a sand wave goes from air to into water, the wave property that does not change is is a amplitude b velocity c wavelength and d frequency the answer to the equation is is a frequency because option d is correct frequency let's read when wave moves from one medium to another it undergoes refraction and the property of wave that remains constant the refraction is frequency so when the sound will move from from air to what I have moved from one medium to another and it undergoes refraction. So frequency does not change during refraction. Number 20, number 40, a gas bottle of initial volume 2 times 3 power 4 cn cube is heated from 20 degree to Celsius to 50 degree Celsius. If the linear expansivity of glass is 9 times power mi minus 6 per Kelvin, the volume of the bottle at 50 degree Celsius is A, 20016.2 cn cube, B, 23005.4 cn cube, C, 23008.1 cn cube, and then D, 23013.5 cn cube. So solution to the problem, option A is correct, 23016.2 cn cube. How do we solve it? Our initial volume or the fair volume given to us, V1 is 2 times power 4 cn cube. I change in temperature that delta theta is 50 minus 20. That gives us 30 Kelvin. And then our linear expansivity, that's alpha, is given us 9 times power minus 6 per Kelvin. Since we are dealing with volume, we're going to convert that linear expansivity to cubic. That you see the gamma, the y symbol. So gamma equal to 3 alpha, that relationship. Multiply 3. A 9 times power minus 6 by 3 gate uh, 27 times power minus 6. That is the cubic or volume expansivity of the solid. So from that formula we have there, 
change in volume is again as gamma that the cubic velocity times v1 initial volume times the change in temperature we make a substitution our gamma is 27 times power minus 6 then times v1 which is 2 times power, 2 times power 4 then times temperature change which is 30 we will have 16.2 cn cubic change in volume but we're not looking for the change in volume we're looking for the new volume v2 the volume at 50 degree and we know that v2 is change in volume plus v1 so the change volume is 16.2 and the v1 is 2 times the power 4 which is nothing but 20,000 if you add them together you have 200 20,016.2 cn cube as the final volume so we are come to the end of this solution to jam 20 to 23 examination in preparation for those that are going to write the 2024 examination in a, about a week's time so we good wish you good luck you also start, start the channel and see the solution to jam chemistry 23 is also in this channel subscribe to the channel share videos on social media to your friends and invite your friends to this channel thank you for listening